Good morning everyone and welcome back to the farm. Giving you our start of the day update in the grain cart tractor because it's very windy outside so I just want to forewarn you, maybe an issue with the audio. I apologize if that bothers any of you, but hey, we're dealing with mother nature, I don't have much say in what goes on. We're moving around right now, there's some heavy rains in the area coming in the next three or four hours. We're gonna set up to a grain bin, try and pick some corn until our time runs out. We got a lot of bees buzzing around this bin site, trying to get the drive over move back home and nutrients spread some fertilizer for us. Very few things in life are as comforting as walking under a bunch of old dead trees while the wind's blowing 30 miles an hour. Oh, 70's got an oil leak. Where is it, Andy? I think it's coming out of a valve body back under the... Moving in and out so I can see. Looks like it's like at the bottom of the main engine gear case. It's, it's wet there. That back valve body back valve body on what this on the front side there's a valve body down there that is wet that wire you just pulled on wire the conduit stuff you pulled on yeah follow that wire down and the valve body i'm talking about is right there i don't know if you can get your hand down there oh i see that <laughs> Getting this 35 foot draper out of the way somewhat in case one of our truck drivers gets a wild hair loading the bin. We're gonna have a service tech from Alliance Tractor, our John Deere dealership, come look at that 670. Probably could run it, I don't know. We don't know how long that leak has been there. I would say it's within the last 24 hours. Really, probably not the best idea to run it when there's enough oil back there to deep fry an elephant. Stay on the safe side, don't wanna run or dry. We can run with the 780 and get along just fine. I mentioned yesterday when dad crossed that Kentucky bridge down through the creek that he almost flipped the combine backwards. I thought he came out unscathed, but it looks like he bent his wheelie bar. So he must have gotten pretty far back. It seemed like the Powercast tailboard was running fine all yesterday, so hopefully it's just a uh, cosmetic issue. We can order a new bar here and get it back to straight. Dad and Katie brought me a soybean plant to go. While we are finishing setting up the auger, they ran over and checked out a field where we left a couple acres. To see if we could cut them today before the rain. Pods are definitely kind of tough still to cut them. They're not extremely pliable. Combine might have a hard time breaking those open. Still pretty wet. Sun's not out, but the wind's blowing very fast if you haven't noticed. I'd say 16%, which is too wet to cut them and take them to the elevator. Maybe if the sun pops up, we could squeeze them out of there before the rain. Hard telling though. Now there's a fragrance right there. We're hunting soybeans. You turn this into a candle, but it wouldn't be one that people actually wanted. It'd be kind of like a troll one, like those jelly beans that taste horrible. corn in that hopper. I was completely empty. Pretty impressive how much it can fit, especially when you push it to the limit or actually past the limit because it was running over the sides. I promise you all that that was worse than it looked. She radioed me and asked me if she was good to keep going. I guess I didn't properly account for the hillside, the 300 bushel corn and gravity. It happens to us all. I'm not a combine operator. How would I have known? We are back at the field that we got rained out on four or five days ago. Got maybe 30 acres to finish here. Hopefully this time around when we leave, there's no corn left. No one's gonna know. Cover it up, can't even tell it happened. The corn out here on this light dirt is phenomenal. Look at the ear size and look at the ground. It's literally gravel. 
I wouldn't be surprised if the entirety of this field did not average over 240 dry, which is really impressive, like I said, because this is not going to be your farm of choice if you had to pick amongst all of our parcels. I wonder if the IRS would allow you to deduct spilled grain as ecosystem charity. It's like a donation to the wildlife. I can almost guarantee you that the deer will have found that by the end of the night. One deer loses it, another deer eats it. Not looking good for us in terms of rainfall. That is about three miles away. And not to mention there's heavier storms to the southwest, kind of making its way to the northeast. I don't know if we'll even be able to finish this field. Oh no. It's not looking good. We got raindrops already. We're doing our best to beat the rain. Run seven miles an hour dumping. Well, that's not a good sign. It appears to me that the storm is getting stronger as it gets closer. We've probably got another five to 10 minutes if we're lucky. Our time is limited. Doing our absolute best to get as much out of this field as possible. I don't think we have much longer because there's the rain about a mile to the west. And it doesn't look like a light one. Rain's picking up quite a bit here, you just want to call it. That's the rest of that on that semi. I called it and told you that. 10 4, only got like 200 bushel. That is where we are right now. You might get lucky and miss the heaviest part of it. It ain't over till the fat lady sings. She hasn't sung yet, but she's definitely stretching out her vocal cords at this point. surprise someone's looking out for us today because the storm split around us we're gonna try and pick some more told you she hadn't sung yet you can't make this stuff up look at that right around us look at that it just gapped around us but we're firing her back up let's go i wish one of you would have told me that was gonna happen before i talked to Don. Well, I guess she hadn't left the building. She was probably just taking a bathroom break because now it's raining very hard. We were luckily unlucky, if that's even possible. We cleared that first one and then another one just popped up right behind it. And there's another one behind it, so we may be done for the day. When the water is running off your roof like that, that's a good sign that it's quitting time. Not this again. Oh man. except for the grain cart has been moved back to the main farm. Not that that's a long trek by any means. It's only a mile up the road to the north. Dad and I kind of assumed that if we started to try and pick some more, the minute we pulled the combine out in the field, unfolded the hopper and started picking, it would start raining again. Which, as I say that, it is pouring outside. Bad hydraulic line was the culprit. Now Dad is washing off all of the hydraulic oil and soybean dust and grime that's accumulated. Would you drink it for a hundred bucks? Personally, I've done much worse for much less money. But there's probably a lot of flavors in that one. Must have been quite the oil leak because we've already put in over a gallon of high guard and it's not even on the sight glass. Put easily four gallons of hydraulic oil in there. But we're back on the sight gauge. Very high on it. The waiting game is over. Thought we could outlast the rain here and pick some corn. It's been about an hour and a half, two hours since we quit and service both combines. Everything's good to go. Yeah, Mother Nature sent a heavy one our way. So, it's quitting time. Not only have we had a decent amount of rainfall here, enough to stop the combines for the short term, now they have a tornado watch across all of central Illinois. I would venture to say that if any of that comes to fruition, we won't be harvesting again tomorrow either. I'm optimistic as always that we'll get this crop out, no problem. Hopefully not have to do any kind of mudding. We've already done more than enough this year, and I'd like to think that maybe that was the last of it. 
That being said, I'll keep you guys all posted on that. I wanted to take a quick moment to talk about the fertilizer we saw earlier. We're spreading red potash or 0062 and DAP or diammonium phosphate 18460. Those are the chemical compositions of nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus. I've mentioned numerous times this growing season about how high fertilizer prices are. Even though it's a very large expense to take on, we don't want to cut back too much. Now, as opposed to putting on 300 and 300, we might be putting on 250 and 250. With these yields we're pulling off of fields, we don't want to back it off too much because we'd be essentially mining the soil or taking out more than we're putting in. It's kind of a short-term gamble to back off this year, thinking that maybe next year it'll be cheaper. For instance, last year was the cheapest fertilizer prices in like a 10 year period. So we did happen to load up last year, so we're gonna pull back a little bit, not completely by any means, and then maybe if we're lucky next year, we'll bump it back up to the 300s. That way we have a lot of fertility. We've always been very adamant about keeping a keen eye on the soil fertility. That's why we're putting lime on to manage that pH. And we wanna make sure that our potassium and phosphorus levels are high enough to support these crops we're producing. Anyways, we can probably discuss that more in another video. I think I wanna pull the plug here. That's more than enough farming for one video. As always, I appreciate you guys tuning in. Like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you wanna see more. And comment down below if you have any questions. You know I love to talk about farming. Have a great day, everyone. Peace.